Okay, so what we're going to do next is add some total calculations. And we're going to do that for sales, cost, profit, and margin. We're going to put those in the group footer. So always allow yourself enough room. And you can start this out a number of ways. You can grab the numeric fields or you can create the functions. I'm going to start by grabbing the numeric fields and just placing them in. And what we'll do is the first one. And the report wizard formatting uh, from the particular template will display. We could always adjust, adjust that within the style. So if I go to group footer, you can see here's the background color. I'll just change that to white. And the text color, we could just make black. And then the size, we'll reduce that down to 10, for this particular element. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is go to your data tab, go into functions, add a function, summary, and sum. And then you're going to have your sum total group sum function. We'll give it a meaningful name. I'll just call this one total sales. And then you select your field name. And the field name is the particular field that you want to sum, in this case, sales. Now it's important to set the reset on group because what's going to happen is every time the region changes, you want it to recalculate the new total. So I have the group called region name. Now, let me show you where that came from. Under the structure tab, there's a groups. When you use the report wizard, it gives you a default name, and they call it name, uh, N-A-M-E. You can go to the attributes of that group and change that name. So that way you have a distinction of what particular group it's for. Okay, so now that you have your new function called sum total sales, you're able to double click the field from the drop down and select total sales. Or keep in mind, you can click the ellipsis button. After you double click it, it'll bring up the little window here total sales. So let's do a preview. And there's our total sales. So let's repeat the process for costs and then profit. Okay, for cost, we'll do the same thing. Grab our numeric field, drop it in our footer, and position. And we'll do the same thing for profit. And we'll do the same thing for margin. And then what we'll also do is copy, select our rubber band, and paste formatting. Next, add the function. That's the sum function again. Give it a name, this time total costs. The field name to be selected is costs, and the reset group is region. And select our field, total costs, and preview. And there's our cost. Now, when we get to profit, this is something that I was mentioning earlier that you had inline calculations and then calculations as functions or formulas. You'll notice that I can't create a total sum for profit. So let's go to functions, add the function, go to summary, click sum. Let's name it total profit. And let's, let's go to select the field name. And you'll notice that we don't have a profit field to select because the inline calculation is not recognized um, because we did that as an inline calculation. I mentioned earlier that you can create a function to do so, and then it will be recognized. So that's where we're going to go in, very similar to what we did with open formula uh, for margin. We're going to do the same thing for profit. So under common, open formula, this one we're going to call profit. And then the formula could be as simple as sales minus costs. And notice every formula has brackets around the field names. OK, so when we go in here, you'll notice that now profit is an object that can be selected. 
and the same thing for the particular function, total profit, we can now select profit. And then reset on the group, region name, select total profit, and then preview. And there's our total profit. Okay, next thing we got to do is change the formatting because we have some decimals in here. So we can grab the rubber band, multi select the items, structure, format, dollar sign, pound, 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 pound. Okay, now for margin, we're going to want to get an average margin for that. So also, let's just get a couple more of the uh, elements. Okay, so we're going to want to get an average for margin. And the way we do that is once again, back in the data functions, add a function, but you want to go to running and select average running. And then we can call this AVG margin. Select the field name. Look for margin. Reset on group. Okay, and then you have also the option to change the scale and the rounding mode if you wish. So let's set this field to average margin. And preview. Okay, now you notice that you do have an average calculation, and I wanted to show you that we don't have a percentage formatting on it yet. So if you want the percentage formatting, select average margin, structure, attributes, and then in your format section, this is where you can put the pound and the percent side. And then when you run, you now have your average margin.